then uh, we will call in the next speaker mr steven brady miles he is the chief executive officer of colombo academy of hospitality management for the slit uh, mr brad uh, brady Mill, uh, miles miles has uh, was employed for 13 years english institute melbourne as the management of uh, compliance and lifestyle lifestyle before his uh, appointment at the william angels institute mr brady mills was the training officer uh, at the australian hotels and hospitality association which is a very important uh, place uh, victoria branch with over 20 years experience in the licensing hospitality industry therefore i think he is the correct person to speak on this subject because the health tourism is part of the thing as Nihal also quite rightly said is hospitality comes a big way and I also would like to recognize Mr. David Samuel from the Australian Embassy in this audience today who has been supporting the college a lot thank you Mr. Steve yeah thank you thank you so much uh, good morning Subo Adesanak I won today I'm going to talk about obviously the miracle destination which is Sri Lanka my perspective is a little bit different because it's not medical, it's not medical tourism. It's hospitality and tourism in general, which therefore medical tourism will benefit if hospitality and tourism is done correctly in the country. Now, I've put down on the, the PowerPoint slide, Sri Lanka has been the miracle destination. I'm a firm believer that Sri Lanka is the miracle destination. And there's a number of reasons why, and I'll highlight that through the PowerPoint today. One particular thing that Sri Lanka has that is unique anywhere in the world is that yes it is a tiny little island, it's filled with 20 million people that are passionate and proud of their country and that's most important. That means there's already an element of success but then there's also that hidden factor where perhaps there's a little bit of lack of confidence or a bit of a concern, can we do things better? Now as a previous speaker uh, spoke about, the Americans they can do it, why can't everyone else do it? Sri Lanka, that's the same. It's a can do. You can do, it's the attitude that's right. 20 million, 20 million people in Sri Lanka is 20 million people in Australia. Same thing, the can do approach. Now basically from a hospitality perspective and looking at students here in Sri Lanka, we always embed in the curriculum that can do approach. And that approach is where people succeed. Now to give you an idea of how powerful tourism actually is, Sri Lanka was officially recorded as being the number one tourist destination as advice from the Lonely Planet. There were other articles written in the US journals in Australia, but the Lonely Planet is the key hospitality and tourism driver for people looking at a different destination. So number one in 2013. Did Sri Lanka capitalise on it? No. What was a marketing strategy around the world. The tourism sector in Sri Lanka at the time was all a little bit mismatched. There wasn't even a Ministry of Tourism. Now if you're looking at a roadmap here in Sri Lanka, there was a perfect opportunity to capitalise on being number one from the Lonely Planet. Although now you're seeing that the trend is starting to occur where there's a benefit also for medical tourism. The previous president set out a report here in Sri Lanka a number of years ago and estimated how many visitors would actually come to Sri Lanka. If you look at 2023, estimated 3.5 million. The Australian government with its tourism estimates in 2023 9 million. How can there be such a difference when you've got two island countries with 20 million people? 9 million, 3.5 million. It's because infrastructure, and that's also improving in this country. Now, I've been living in Sri Lanka for the last two years, and I've seen rapid growth, a massive change in the landscape in Colombo. The Hyatts, the Mervyn Picks, the Shangri-Las, Sheridans, improving with Cinnamons, Kingsbury, etc. The list goes on. Travel around the country, down south. Waligama, perfect example. The Marriott massive establishment. The airlines are starting to look at the routes to Sri Lanka. There's a lot of talk around the world about this wonderful country. But when people come here, it's looking at that level of can we service the industry correctly to make the guest and their expectations correct. 
and what they expect. Now from an Australian point of view, in hospitality, the hospitality service and training is now being brought into the hospital and healthcare system. We have a number of hospitals in Australia that are coming to our institute and saying, how can you look at changing our method because we've got a different guest expectation. In Australia now when you go to hospital, you expect to go into a hospital like a hotel. It's not admissions, it's like a check-in. It's looking at what services are then provided from that particular hospital. The cuisine, which was mentioned before, has to be top-notch cuisine. But who trains that person for that cuisine? It comes back to general hospitality and tourism. So when we look at Sri Lanka, I proudly put those details down. If we look at health and medical tourism and we promote it throughout the world, we've got to go back to some of the basics. And here's a list of some of the basics. If you look at Asian countries around the world, Sri Lanka's probably got the best air quality. That's pretty important. Look at the wildlife, the natural beaches and resorts. What is going to change significant theoretical healthcare aspect is the combination between a hotel to a hospital in a nice location. Where a person might have that medical treatment, but they can stay in that resort or that hotel very close by. Are the nurses on call 24-7? It's what people are looking at. Smart hoteliers will build hotels near hospitals because they know that families coming from regions will also have to have that accommodation while their loved one is in hospital. And that's a big role for the hotel industry. So for thinking and planning, if you've got a large hospital somewhere or you know it's going to be built, and it doesn't matter what the treatment is, a smart hotelier should build a hotel nearby. The location of Sri Lanka is also important. Right in the middle of the world. 11 hours to England, 11 hours to Australia. Now, if we want to improve tourism in Sri Lanka, we also then have to look at the airline services. And why is it that there is still no direct flight from Australia to Sri Lanka? Thailand capitalises on medical treatment from Australian perspective. It's eight and a half hours away. It's a cheaper alternative. Things that occur in Australia medically, quite expensive. Thailand is not. But what a beautiful destination this place would be for medical tourism, being 11 hours away from the UK and 11 hours away from Australia. So in 2020, my vision would be not 3.5 million people visit Sri Lanka. We should actually be focusing on double that. It should be 7 million. If you look at the hospitality and tourism in general, we've got to look at the economic factors. Now, all of you here today are relying on hospitality and tourism. You're in a hotel that's serviced by people who may have studied through hospitality and tourism. Some of you as international guests have flown here on the airlines. Again, that's part of us in educating people to make that service correct to get a person to their destination. If you look at hospitality and tourism, 10% of the economic activity around the globe is in the industry. But surprisingly for a number of people, it's still seen as a service industry. So it's got a negative connotation in some parts of the world. But the hospitality and tourism as a service industry is exactly the same as a hospital. It's still a service industry, just different. But customer service and expectations can be very, very similar. So from my point of view today, I'm from the Colombo Academy of Hospitality Management. We're here in Sri Lanka in a joint venture with the William Angus Institute from Australia, linked in with SLIT out in Malabi. Now what we're focusing on is changing the way in which service, service providers and the service industry occurs and operates on a day-to-day -day basis here in Sri Lanka. We're actually focusing on changing methods through an Australian curriculum history and giving students the opportunity to have a wonderful career in our industry. So to give you a little bit of an idea, William Anglis has been in operation for 75 years in Australia and it's government endorsed and backed. As I said to you earlier, hotels and the healthcare system are now coming to the hospitality providers to look at different ways of service. 
The financial sector has also come into hospitality and tourism institutes to say, how do we improve the quality of service and how do we meet those customer expectations? All generic, but at the same time, sometimes the most simple things in life are the hardest things to do. From an Australian perspective for the industry here in hospitality and tourism, there are three things that we focus on. The main one is the attitude and the can-do approach. The knowledge that's given to a student is knowledge that can be given to anyone. The practical skills is what we push, but mainly it's the third point. The willingness and the love to participate in the industry to make sure that there is improvements and those improvements therefore should occur for the general public here in Sri Lanka. an idea of the structure at our institute. It's modern, it's new, it's been in operation for two years and again it's all related to practical skills so that there is a benefit for all. I'll give you a bit of an idea here through some of the, the pictures. As mentioned in hospitals there's catering wing and with the catering wing you need skilled trained staff to support the healthcare business. So basically, just giving you a little bit of an idea of some of the activities that we do at the Institute itself, what is important is the growth and development of an individual and how that ties into that customer expectation. So I'm focusing on the customer expectation linked with hospitality and tourism generic to the hospital and healthcare industry. The one main thing that lacks in any business is the third step here, mapping the process from the customer's point of view. In successful terms of hospitality, we've got to think about exactly being on the opposite side of the table. Healthcare, what's it like for you to be in that bed? What are your expectations? Can you service and can you deliver those expectations? And that's always a trick because most of the times we think we know best. But do we actually ask our customer or our client or our patient exactly what their needs are and what their wants are? And it's a mind-blowing learning curve. We've got customer change happening. We've got a different group of people in a different thought process on expectation. How much a person pays should be how much they get, not necessarily. So when we focus on business models and we're looking at the industry itself, we've got to look at how we can connect with the consumer. How do we satisfy that consumer? How do we get repeat business from that consumer? If we look at repeat business here in Sri Lanka with tourist arrivals, a lot of the repeats are people that have gone overseas, come back home, gone overseas, come back home. What we're starting to see significantly with the arrival here in Sri Lanka with tourists is the repeat person that is coming back because they love to come back. They live overseas, they experience it once, they've found something unique about this country and they'll come back again and again and again. The biggest promotion for Sri Lanka with hospitality and tourism at this point in time is word of mouth. It's not what the government spends on tourism campaigns around the world. It's board and share the experience of Sri Lanka. Another problem that we face in the industry is again spending too much money for little value. If you're looking at healthcare system with the hospitals, to the hotels, there's always a focus on spending lots and lots of money and it doesn't necessarily need to be that way and they can be glamorous. The biggest downfall for a hotel that is glamorous and beautiful is if you don't have the service and the right people in that business, then you don't have a business at all. That has to also be replicated into the hospital system. It can be a beautiful hospital, fantastic facilities, but if you haven't got the right staff in that hospital, you're going to have a situation where there's not going to be that repeat business. So the common thing here is about people and people management. Getting the right people to serve your business. Again, big mistake in hospitality. 
is not spending enough time on the frontline staff. Who's there to greet? How much has been involved? Is there professional development? Are you continually looking at improving and changing and updating the business and the business model? What we also do, certainly from a hotelier's perspective, is spend a lot of money on advertising. In fact, probably way too much. Focusing on the people that are in the actual business and the client expectation is going to be far more rewarding from a repeat business model and a continuing model. The other thing in hospitality that must be met, and Sri Lankan tourism must do this extremely well, is whatever is promised must be delivered. Because then it's, if it hasn't, then there's no exceeding that expectation. Now just a couple of points before I actually close. Basically, when we're looking at uh, hospitality and tourism from a Sri Lankan perspective, we know that we've got to train staff to support your industry. So the two go hand in hand. Now, I really hope that from a Sri Lankan medical perspective, that health and medical tourism can grow here, and it will be a great benefit for all in, in the country economically. At the same time, I also hope that there's a lot more investment in Sri Lanka, whether it's private or government, to support the general hospitality and tourism industry. If hospitality and tourism industry here in Sri Lanka can grow and be big and be far more economical than anything else, then our medical tourism will have that spin-off effect. Just in closing, I'm not too sure if you're aware, but hospitality tourism is now worth six billion US dollars in Sri Lanka. The tea industry is three billion. So there's significant growth already. So again, from my perspective, I hope you capitalize on what is starting to change and occur in this wonderful country. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Steve uh, Brady Miles. I think you gave a lot of insight to, to the subject that we are discussing today. And when you look from outside eyes, only you realize the potential of Sri Lanka. And uh, thank you very much for making that great presentation.